Hello, everyone. I'm Blake Oliver, CPA, here with Corey Cornoyer of Growth Lab. How are you doing, Corey? Hey, everyone. I'm good. How are you? I'm good because we're going to do something really fun today. We are going to do a 13-week cash forecast in a spreadsheet. You could do this in Excel. You could do this in Google Sheets. We're going to show you how. But first, Corey. From scratch. From scratch. But first, Corey, I have some questions. Why would we do this and who's going to do a 13-week cash forecast? I've seen a lot of people begin to do this more and more, especially over the past two years. Who does this? It's any business, or it's business agnostic, I will say. It's not when you raise 10 million bucks. It's not the week after, right? It's not when you have excess cash in the bank. You're going to get more value out of this when you are really like cash planning, right? Whether that's you're implementing a new business or service line, whether you are trying to pay off debt and really like want to play with the maneuverability of like payments, you're expanding your team, you want to adjust payroll, or you're starting a new like business. You want to just see, is this like a viable cash producing source? It depends on the circumstances, but I'll say in summary, like when you are tight on cash. So I take it, this is going to show us where our cash is every week through this 13 week model. At the end, we'll see, or in the middle, perhaps we'll see if we're not going to have enough doing this, keeping this up to date every week helps us know that ahead of time. So we can deal with the upcoming problem of not having the cash. It's a weekly adjustment, right? This is not a one and done and you put in your filing cabinet and it's like revisit it in a year, right? It has to be continuously updated, right? It's, it's a live working copy. Every week, update it, go through the process, and you're going to get a lot of visibility that you probably didn't have. All right, well, let's get into it, shall we? We're going to start with a blank spreadsheet. Build this up from here so that you can see every cell, every formula. It's actually not terribly complicated. We're not using super advanced Excel formulas. We're using addition, multiplication. Yeah, it's, it's about the structure. This should really be not an overcomplicated model, right? This is not meant to replace your your long range plan or your financial model to investors or you know the board or anything like that. Like this is a working copy for you to really fine tune like the cash movements in your business. A lot of companies just manage cash by the bank account balance. And so this is hopefully giving that individual visibility and a glimpse into the next 13 weeks. I'm going to walk through a little bit of the structure, starting from scratch. As I go through this, I'll kind of explain the logic and thinking behind the way we do it. But really just like start off with setting up the, the formats, right? Week one, two, I have this off to the side, so I'm going to copy some of these. The most important part, and this is one that actually people get confused quite a bit, is the date. Keep the date in there. I like to do these, and I suggest to people that they always do these at the beginning of the week. So in this case, we're going to go from the beginning of this past week. So 4 11 It's the 14th today. You can build a formula off of that. Bring that out for every, every week. Now, there's an important point there as to the timing of that first week or whatever time you're doing this on. Because what I've seen a lot is people will do this. Let's say we're doing it on the 14th today, April 14th. I don't want to do April 14th. And like adjust that that way. Reason being is because when you do it interweek, you have cash movements that maybe don't get reconciled if you're trying to refer back to your QuickBooks or your AP or AR. You're trying to backtrack cash movements that have already happened and you're going to spend a ton of time that's like not worth spending trying to like reorganize history in the past. So I always like to start these on the beginning of the week and really like diving into it like we just talked about, Blake, every Monday. First thing you do on Monday or Sunday night is update this cash flow. Next, we have the beginning cash balance. That's what I'm going to go in every Monday, look at my bank balance, see what I've got, yep. put in that number. It is the bank balance. It's not your QuickBooks balance sheet bank number. It is truly like go into your bank accounts and sum up the total cash balances you have as of Sunday night or Monday morning. So let's just assume that we start with $20,000. Now, Blake, for this example, I'm going to use a, let's use a dog grooming business, a service-based business, uh, but let's do a little bit of a twist on it. Let's kind of assume that you have these dog grooming business that has these service calls as usual, but then you also have a monthly dog grooming subscription. I like to start with always the operating cash inflows. A lot of people, I think, avoid the cash flow statement. There's a couple ways that you can do this, and most of them, you know, you have your net income. There are adjustments to reconcile net income. 
you know, your financing cash flows, your, your investing cash flows. And like, it's a very difficult for individuals sometimes to conceptualize like how that impacts and how those actually get categorized. There's a lot of value in those, but for these 13 week cash flows, like the point is for people to use this. And so I like to just kind of consolidate it by what are your cash inflows and what are your cash outflows? Very binary here. Your cash inflows in this case, you have a dog grooming subscription. And then you also have those ad hoc service calls. And so those are your total cash inflows, right? And, you know, just sum those up at the top. And we bring those along. Any of the service lines that you have operating, whether that's other revenue lines that you have, anything that is your pure revenue generators can go in here. Those are your operating cash inflows. And then I have other cash inflows. So in this case, let's just assume that this business has a line of credit that they can pull on. And that's going to sum in this case, just, just one now. We can always expand on this, but this is kind of the, the starting point that I like to work with. And then you have your total cash inflows. And this is the culmination of all of your cash inflows for this, for that particular time period. In this case, each week. So that's solely going to be that plus that. Now, the reason why I like to have those subtotals is because you're going to begin expanding off of this. As, as the business grows, you're going to have more operating cash inflows as you have other cash inflows. Maybe you take on money from investors or, or other sources, family and friends, whatever that may be. You're going to begin to expand this. And if your formulas are driven by each of these cells, it's just another place that you are prone to errors. And you know, it, it happens to the best of us. Question for you, Corey. This business has subscription element. It has ad hoc service call element, one-time fees, and that's how they've broken down their cash inflows. We could also do it other ways, right? Like if I had just a handful of customers, I could just have like five lines for my five customers and then put in the amounts I'm going to receive based on when I've invoiced them, when they're due. Or if I have rents that I collect, I could do that same idea by, by different buildings or... 100%. I'm glad you brought that up because... I'm going to say yes and no. If you have five, five customers, yeah, absolutely put those in there because you're going to have granularity into, let's say customer A, they're due on the first of the month, but they are expecting to pay at the second week of the month, whatever, right? You can adjust those on a customer by customer basis. Where I may push back on that and say don't would be if you have a hundred customers, right? You don't want a hundred line items that you are then managing a hundred different inflows and invoicing processes for each of those. So, so in other words, don't overcomplicate this thing. Try to keep it to no more than what a handful of lines in that. Yeah. No more than I'll call it 15 to 20 cash inflow lines. The reason why I say that number is, is really it's based on scalability and manageability. Cause if you never go in this and you never use it because it's overwhelming for you, what's the point of doing it in the first place? So that's our total cash inflows and those will sum up and we'll get back to the numbers to fill those in. Then we have our operating cash outflows. I like to break these down based on just your general operating expenses, things like payroll. We're going to have grooming supplies. I have a handful of them listed over here. I'm just going to copy those in for us, save some time. And again, like right. with the cash inflows, we're talking about major expenses. We're not going to break this down by every single software subscription we pay or every single vendor we pay, just the, the big picture items. Exactly. Yeah. We're not going to do, you know, we're not going to do each person's payroll. You know, we're not going to do each underlying supply that you use for the dog grooming. Then we're going to have some additional, just like we have additional other cash inflows, we're going to have additional cash outflows. In this case, let's just assume they're debt. So additional debt payments. And the two common ones right now that a lot of businesses are probably facing is some form of SBA debt, and then credit cards. And let's just assume that's kind of the, the bulk of the cash outflows for today. So total cash outflows. Once again, just summing those two numbers. And then we have the net cash flow, right? Which is the number that we really care about. Which is simply your inflows minus your outflows. And like you said, this makes it really easy to add lines inside of any section and not break this formula because they'll get summed up inside of that sum function. Exactly. And then what we really want to care about is the ending cash balance. 
And the expected end cash balance is basically what is your beginning balance plus what are any changes in cash flow? It's a positive sum there because in this net cash flow, you are taking the inflows minus the outflows. So if your outflows are higher than your inflows, that number will be negative. You'll see a decrease in that expected ending. Let's go back to the top again. That beginning is simply the ending of the prior period. And that's just going to go all the way along. There's no numbers in there yet. And then that's going to belong here. So this is kind of the, the general structure of the cash flow, 13 week cash flow. This is pretty much the template that we use for, for all of these cash flows that we build for customers, right? It's a very simplified structure that can be scaled and replicated across industry and across business. Just replace these line items with whatever the service line they have, you know, whatever other expenses they have. Maybe they have other insurances to pay, or maybe they have other contractors that they need to pay, right? However they get categorized or whatever the outflow is, you just pop in a line here and expand it. But it's a templatized approach to this. So let's begin, Blake, kind of filling in some of these numbers and seeing how it floats. Yeah, let's so, make some money. <laughs> let's make some money. I like to start with the easy ones, right? So ad hoc service calls, right? Let's just assume that the business is doing on average about 500 bucks a week in just ad hoc service calls, right? These are just individuals that call up and say, hey, I need my dog groomed today. Let's just assume 500 bucks a week. And so now we have the, the dog grooming subscriptions. Now, for something like this, where it's it's a subscription, right, there's probably a, there's a number of customers associated with this. There's moving pieces to this. I like to build some form of minor revenue model within this, right? I go back to, this is supposed to be a scalable, you know, working copy for you. So if it's not giving you the visibility into what the movements are, or how you derive some of these numbers, then it's really not doing its job. So I'm going to build for us, Blake, a little bit of a, a little bit of a working revenue model. Now, this is not meant to replace your budget. I go back to that, right? This is really trying to be a that week-to-week -week tactical movements of cash. So your dog grooming subscription, you know, it's really based on number of grooming subscribers and the grooming subscription price. Let's just assume for kind of that subscription basis that it's on the first of the month. One thing to keep in mind here with these dates, this is the week starting, All right? So maybe I'll make a note here for us. Ah, uh, yes. So when I'm thinking about monthly, I have to adapt it to this weekly model and not get too confused. Exactly. It's not going to go here. It's actually going to go on week the first order. of the month because that would happen in this week. Now, a key point there though, Blake, is like, this is a perfect example, right? That, that first of the month is probably on a Sunday, right? Because we base this on Monday week starting. Mm -hmm. that cash, if you're doing credit cards or things like that, the cash may not actually hit until the second in some cases, right? Versus out here, that cash will probably hit within week eight versus week six. So once again, it, this is meant for tactical movements of cash. Let's just assume that we do get it on the first of the month, even though it's you know, on a weekend. Let's say we have 200 subscribers and let's just assume that the average grooming price is about 50 bucks. Oh man, that's like more than mine are good. So now the dog grooming subscription, it's going to be grooming subscribers times the grooming subscription price. Bring that along just as a formula. Then we'll backfill some of these. All right. So 200 subscribers times 50 bucks a pop, 10K. 10K a month. Let's assume some growth on this though, right? Like it's a growing business. You know, we're seeing people getting more dogs. They want them nice and clean. Let's just assume a 10% growth on it. So times 1.1. 1 .1. They're growing pretty fast at 10% monthly. Mm -hmm. So you got 200, 220, 242. So you can see that dog grooming subscription revenue growing from 10,000 to 11 to 12, roughly. You'll begin to see some of these cash balances actually, you know, you see it rising right now because we have no cash outflows. So let's kind of jump down because as of right now, we technically don't need that line of credit. So let's just jump to OPEX, operating cash outflows, payroll. Let's assume that you have yourself and you have one other person that's helping you out. So let's just assume 2,500 bucks a week. Bring that along. If you have bi-weekly payroll, right, you're going to have to kind of, you can play with that. 
I've seen some companies pay on the 1st and the 15th or the 15th and the 30th, you know, first and last day, whatever that may be. You'll have to, once again, make sure that you adjust these. If it's the 1st and the 15th, it'd be here and then it would be here. It's not necessarily bi-weekly in those cases. So just be kind of aware of what the actual cadence is as you do this. Payroll is a good example, but it applies to a lot of things. And then grooming supplies. This is going to be a fun one for us, Blake, because we have a couple variables in here, right? We have you doing ad hoc service calls, and then you also have us doing the, the subscription ones. So let's assume if you're doing at 50 bucks, uh, $500 a week at 50 bucks, that's about 10 ad hoc service calls. So you have 10 ad hoc service calls, plus you have about, you know, if we straight line this 200 divided by four, call it, that's another 50 per week. So you really have, what's that coming out to? About 60, 60 per week that you're doing right now. Let's just assume that each one costs about $10 in supplies. That's the water, it's the, the shampoo, the, you need a new brush here and there, right? So it's the, the all-encompassing supplies. So I'm just going to do 60 times 10 bucks each, right? I'm going to pull this out all the way. However, we know that come week eight, based on our expectations, we're actually growing to 220. So let's begin to kind of drive this a little bit more formulaic. So let's say 220 divided by four. It's going to give us how many off the subscriptions. Then I want to bolt onto this. Then we have ad hoc service calls. Divided by 50. And then multiply that all times 10. Add some brackets, you know, PEMDAS. So we can see that grooming supplies grow. We'll have to adjust that out here too, because that becomes 242. All right, so we, we expect that our grooming supplies is growing as our subscriber base is growing because of, for obvious reasons, more subscribers, more dog groomings, more, more expenses. You know, there's ways to drive this a little bit more formulaically if you want to. You know, I think the theme here that we want to get back to is this is meant to be a working copy. This is not meant to be all algorithms because if it's all algorithms across the board, it's going to be a really hard time for you to backtrack. You know, in three weeks from now, how did I get that number? How do I get back to that? It's like, where was my head at, right? Versus just having a pretty straight lines, clear cut. And that's one of the benefits of having a, a simple revenue model up here because it's going to give you visibility into into some of those numbers so that you don't have to go to different data sources to backtrack. And to be so. clear, if these formulas are kind of overwhelming you, you don't have to do this. Once you've built this model the way it's set up, you could just plug in numbers. But Absolutely. It's, nice. it's nice to have the formulas built because it saves you time in the future. You know now that grooming supply is just automatically going to grow as mm -hmm. you add on, as you, as you grow. And you know, maybe a way you want to break this out is just based on weekly, right? You, you straight line these 200 by 50 a week and you, you have them pay once a month. There's ways that you can play with this, but yeah, spot on Blake. This is, you can always expand. You can always grow it. So you got 60, roughly 60 to 70 grooming appointments per week, quite a bit. So let's just assume gas is expensive today. So let's just assume you're spending about 200 bucks a week in gas, right? It's two fill ups roughly, maybe three, depending on where you're at. Once again, you can adjust this, right? If you're expecting to uh, buy another truck out here, right? You may want to allocate more money for gas. Truck loan, you got one truck that you're kind of sharing. Truck and insurance, let's call it 500. You have rent and utilities. Let's assume that we are paying on the, let's assume, like, let's switch this up. We're going to pay on the 15th of the month, right? Rent is due on the 15th. Oh, yeah. So what we said, I put that in. So in this case, we do week one here. Let's just assume, let's call it a thousand bucks. And then the next 15th would happen on week five because it's between these dates. Week 10, and that looks like it's it for the model. So that's a good reminder that the week starting encompasses the next seven days. So exactly. That's, yeah. where, that's where I'm going to put this. So the 11th encompasses the 15th. Week of the 11th encompasses the 15th. And that's where I put my payment. Exactly. Phone service. Let's do this back on the first of the month. Switch it up. 
So let's just assume, let's call it, what, like a hundred bucks? Sure. I like to fill these in with zeros, just helps my brain personally to better kind of like organize the data and see the flow of it versus sporadic numbers all over the place, but personal preference. Now that's going to encompass most of our operating cash outflows. So let's go on to some of these debt payments. So you'll see right now, yes, we do hit some lows, but you know, we pop back up after we get that cash inflow from the dog grooming subscription revenue. So, you know, we do have some movements. There's some other things that we want to kind of expect. You know, you have some SBA debt, SBA for better or for worse is not too forgiving on some of these things. So let's assume that on the first of the month, let's assume that you pay $250 a month in the SBA loan. I can assume it's the EIDL. Uh, and as you do that, I can see we're starting to get low on cash in week 12, beginning cash balance of only $800. That would make me a little nervous. Getting a little tight. Yeah. And we'll come back to this, but there's a small opportunity, I'll call it. But you know, what I've seen a lot now is these credit cards, people coming in, you know, you have credit card debt built up and say you have $4,500. That $4,500, a lot of people are managing that credit card debt based on, you know, a payoff date, right? They have a goal in mind on, I want to pay off my credit card debt by, by, you know, the end of this 13 weeks, right? The end of these three months. These are obviously going to be flexible, but let's just assume if it's 4,500 divided by, you know, three payment periods, call it 1,500 a month. That would get us to that spot. And when you are thinking about credit cards, you're only thinking about this, this is the credit card balance that we have not paid off because I might, I might be paying for gas on my credit card and it's already, it's already up there in the operating cash outflow. So I don't want to double count it. Right. Exactly. That's one thing that I see a lot is, yeah, let's, let's assume it's gas, right? If you're putting $200 a week on gas in your credit card, you're building up that credit card balance. You don't want to double count and then say, if you build up 600 bucks, here in gas, and then you pay off 600 bucks here, right? You're double counting because that is counting as a cash outflow up here. And this is a good example because it really depends on how the individual's brain works, right? Some of you want to see those cash outflows categorized based on really where they're at. And some of some businesses may just say, I'm going to put roughly $10,000 a month on my credit card and pay it off at the end of the month, right? Just lump all my expenses, right? You can really slice and dice this however you want, right? It's meant to be a tactical working copy. There's no one way to do this. But to your point, point Blake, yeah, spot on. Like, make sure you don't double count these. So you'll begin to see, right? We, we begin to have a little bit of a, a cash dip, right? So we're, we're in a little bit of a trouble. This is why we do this, right? This is the reason we do a cash forecast is to see whether we're going to have an issue. Yeah, and I, I'd say the other piece to that is what these monthly models don't show you, this is a perfect example, right? The week of the 424 leading into the first week of May, we start May with, or end April in that case, with 17,000. We end, we end May, begin June with about 9,000. We end June, we begin July with about 5,000, right? So your monthly model is going to show you as having a positive cash balance. But we know there's periods in time that that number gets a little bit too tight for comfort. And then in week 12, in this case, right, you're negative. So how do you, how do you deal with that? There's a couple different things in this, in this use case. There may be things like you may want to adjust some, some of that credit card debt, right? Maybe you, maybe you zero these out and just lump it all at the end, right? When you have, when you have enough cash built up, or maybe in this case, you want to pull on the line of credit. So there's a couple different ways that we can pull on something like a line of credit. You can drive this formulaically, like we talked about before, right? Where if you dip below a certain number, then automatically pull. The way you would simply do that is, you know, it's an if statement. So if the beginning cash balance is less than, let's call it $10,000, give you a little bit of a buffer, then I want to pull $10,000. 
I'll pull that out just for example. Or you'll see us doing two draws on it. Right there because that beginning balance dropped below 10. Right there because the beginning balance was about 78. The only thing you'll have to contemplate here is the debt payoff for that. So as of right now, if you didn't pull anything on it, you have an additional $20,000 in debt. So you may want to come back into here and do line of credit payoff, right? Line of credit, as you all know, a bit more flexible on that payoff date. And so you can really have to zero it out until you get to week three where you end with 20000 And maybe you want to do a you know $10,000 payment off this, right? So that you're really kind of managing that debt a little bit more. Illustrative, that's one way to do it with line of credit. The only th words of caution I will say is you want to be careful about how algorithmic you do with this. Because if you are just looking at some of these top line numbers and seeing, yeah, I make it through, but forget that you are supposed to be pulling $20,000 on the line of credit, you can really be caught by surprise. I like to do these a little bit more manual. Let's say they are just going to pull right around week, week eight. Let's just say they'll pull 15,000. Let's get it all in one tranche. Great. So, you know, Blake, we're, we got a sustainable business, right? These are growing. The subscribers are growing. Hopefully the expenses are growing at a slower pace. And so, you know, you're producing cash flow, right? You can see the net cash flow right now. It's averaging. You're losing about 300 bucks a week. So there's, there's things that need to be adjusted in here, right? Maybe that's after here, your, your credit card payments will hypothetically be done. So you're going to produce that free cash flow on top of that. But the subscriber base is also growing. So maybe there's an opportunity in here to say, do dog subscription boxes for treats, right? Treat boxes on a monthly basis. These boxes are popping up left and right. So let's kind of go through that process of building out another revenue stream. We're going to leverage what's already here a little bit, but we're going to have, let's say, subscriber conversion to treat boxes. And then treat box pricing. Let's just assume that, you know, you're not going to start it here. Make that a percentage. Not going to start it there. Let's say you start it uh, right around the end of May, beginning of June. You know, your beginning adoption is about 10%. Start small. Then, you know, month two of being in service, let's say you pop up to 35%. Treat box pricing. Let's see. Let's call it $25, Blake. And now the purpose of this, once again, it's your, it's a slight revenue model, right? So I'm sure there's nuances to this based on, you know, week to week, based on location of the grooming subscribers, right? But once again, we're not trying to build a whole revenue model. This is meant to be flexible. You know, it's a, it's a working copy that, you know, maybe week 12, you don't hit 35% penetration. Maybe it's 30%, right? It's meant to be working. Let's go ahead and build in another service line item. I like to build these right in between, if, assuming the flow of the information fits, because it's going to automatically capture that in your formulas. So we got dot treat boxes. And these are simply how many subscribers you have times the penetration rate times the price of each box. So how many subscribers actually convert to those boxes and then times that price per box. Let's bring that all the way out. You'll see in here we have zero for this first month, 550 for that second month and grow to about 2000, right? These are playing, you can play with these, but that's really what this, this tool is meant to do. Great. So we begin to see cash impact, right? We got an extra $2,000 in the bank based on this 2,500. You can come back to the table and kind of play with this line of credit. But first, let's assume the expenses you have with this. You're going to have to buy some, uh, some materials and supplies for those boxes. So let's just say treat box supplies. This is an important factor and, you know, you can take this application and apply it to many different businesses, whether it's manufacturing or, you know, other retail shops, but 
In order to supply these boxes to consumers at the beginning of the month, there has to be some form of lead time on getting those materials in your door. You're not going to show up to the store and buy you know, five bones and ship them out that same day, right? Do you have to have some form of lead time? And that's obviously going to play into the cash flow and the cash timing of this. So let's just assume that you buy these two weeks in advance. Give yourself a little bit of a lead time. Maybe you buy them online and you need them to get shipped. So I'm going to do that same formula, right? How many grooming subscribers times what is the conversion, aka how many treat box subscribers do I have, right? So that's really the number that this is telling. And let's assume that each box costs about $10, right? That's encompassing of the dog treats, the packaging, and the shipping label. All right. It's going to be zero for now because that conversion rate is zero. But as we bring this out, you'll begin to see kind of some preemptive expenses, right? So 220 on that 550 in revenue, 847 on that 2100 in revenue. I'm going to zero this back out for a second here. And so you'll begin to see this model kind of fundamentally change as we go through this process. And you can begin to adjust these algorithmically, right? Maybe you get a higher conversion rate. Maybe you, the treat box pricing goes up to 30 bucks, right? So you, you begin to realize it's more valuable than what you're selling it for, right? You can play with this, but at the end of the day, you still have that negative cash flow here and you have 270 in the bank there. And so, you know, another good example to highlight when you're going through this process is even though you have cash, right, it, it depends on the cash timing of these things. And so you start with 2830. Yes, you are collecting these monies, but when does payroll hit? Versus when do you get this cash in? Because payroll's 2,500 and you only started with about 2,800. So you can get more granular, but the point here is to kind of illustrate what is my cash movements? What is the timing? Because maybe I need to, you know, maybe I need to defer some expenses over here, right? Maybe I'm going to put these on a credit card. Maybe I'm going to put my cat, my gas on a credit card, right? Build up a little bit more of a cushion and then do an extra payment, right? It's not paid off there. And I'm going to do, let's just call it a $3,000 payment there. It's meant to be working so that you can get through that without pulling on the line of credit. I'm going to undo that for a second. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you do want to just simply, I need more money. And so I'm going to pull an extra $10,000 to the line of credit here. But I think Blake kind of in summary, kind of in closing on this is the point we're trying to get is this is a working copy. This is not a one and done. And this is really meant to be a tactical movement of cash. And this is a tool you want to be using every week. Get your coffee on Monday, update it, make sure it still matches the reality of how your business works. And you've made it a little fancy here with the revenue model, the basic revenue model. You've got the formulas, but again, you could just plug in numbers to the basic template and it'll really help you. It'll help you get an idea of where you stand. So Corey, I'm, I'm excited because yes. uh, we're going to give away this template. So if you want to download a copy of Corey's completed 13 week cash flow forecast template, uh, you can get that in the description. There will be a link to get this uh, template and you can make a copy of it, download it as an Excel file, use it for your own purposes, and hopefully stay on top of cash flow for either your own business or your client's business. Yeah, no, there's a, there's a lot you can do with this. And, you know, All right. think of these, I like to think of these as, as templates, right? So you can always expand on them. You can always hard code. You can always do algorithms. But once you figure out the structure and the format of the bare bones, you can always grow from there. That was great. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe, leave us some feedback. Also check out our website, growthlabfinancial.com. Again, subscribe so you can be notified for the next one.